Well, today in Washington, the Securities and Exchange Commission and the Commodities Future Tr Trading Commission are holding a joint hearing as the two bodies consider how to best coordinate regulation. Bloomberg's Lindsay Arendt is at the CFTC, and she is joined by one of its commissioners, Bart Schultz. Lindsay, I'll hand it to you. That's right, Laurie. A lot big a historic meeting here today. SEC and CFTC, as you mentioned, I am here with CFTC Commissioner Brad Chilton. Thank you so much for joining us. Sure, good to be with you. Let's start off with this mandate from the White House that the SEC and CFTC find a way to harmonize their regulatory efforts. A lot of turf battles, some acrimonious uh, background between these two agencies. How tough is this challenge going to be? Oh, it's pretty tough, but look, I mean, we're in these jobs to protect consumers and make these things work, so uh, I'm really pleased that we're beginning that process, and uh, shame on us if we can't try to harmonize these things, make markets more efficient, more competitive, and protect consumers. Well, you have some market players like CME Group CEO uh, Craig Donahue who came out today saying he wants to see more stringent lines uh, drawn between these two agencies. He doesn't want to see a one-size-fits-all approach. What do you say to that? Well, I think it's a balancing act. You have that are overly burdensome, that we allow the free market to exist. At the same time, we have to realize that there may be some sideboards that we need on these markets to ensure that, for example, speculators aren't playing an excessive role and doing something with prices. So I think as we go forward, we're going to get this right. And that's our job. You know, we also heard uh, from Annette Nazareth, former SEC commissioner, saying she thinks at the end of the day the two agencies should have been merged. Do you feel, uh, do you feel the same? No, I mean, if we can't get this right, Lindsay, if we can't uh, solve some of these longstanding issues, that would be a good argument for merging. But uh, our job is to protect the public and try to do these things, uh, harmonize our, relation, our regulations as best possible. I think we're going to do it, and I don't think there's going to be any talk about merger if we get it right. Can you give us some specifics about how these regulations regulations might be harmonized, what you're specifically thinking about doing and implementing? Sure. Well, the issues they're talking about today were portfolio margining, about uh, cross-jurisdictional products that are products that have both the word security and futures in their names, and then uh, futures on foreign security indexes. Those are sort of the three big ones where there is inconsistencies, and therefore it has made us less competitive both uh, in terms of exchanges and in terms of driving the economic engine of our democracy. We need to get that right. Well, what do you think is going to happen? What will ultimately be the regulations and sort of the, the, the coordination between the, the two agencies at the end of the day? Well, I, I can't prejudge the, the outcome. I, I'd be a, a more of a fortune teller than, I, than I'd like to think I am. But here's what I think would be the most important thing coming out of these meetings. It, we agree to further meetings because it's only us that can solve this. It's not the staff level. It's the people that are nominated by the president, confirmed by the Senate. Those are the folks that should resolve these. You've got to have the right people in the room if you're going to make a difference. And I I think today, we're, instead of acting like two agencies, we're going to act like one government. There's been some mention of concern that these pushes to, to over-regulate or to continue regulating could potentially drive business overseas. What do you think about that? Oh, I think we pretty much had an open free market approach for the last eight years, and I'm not so sure it worked out that well. So like I say, I think we need appropriate sideboards. We'll do it in a way that doesn't push markets overseas or to uh, dark markets. Talking to business groups like the Chamber of Commerce, they say the, the, the two things that keep them up at night now the fact that uh, there's only cash or liquid securities that are accepted as collateral for trades. I want to ask you about that first of all, mm -hmm. get a sense of what you think about that and where that's going. Well, you, you know, the, the Chamber of Commerce has their, their viewpoint. My job is to protect consumers and taxpayers. And so I'd say, you know, we've got to keep our eye on the ball and make sure that we're doing everything we can to guard against fraud, abuse, and manipulation while making sure that these markets are both efficient and, in, and effective, not just for traders, not for, just for exchanges, but like I say, for consumers. A lot of concern about how do you regulate standard versus customized products and financial instruments, another issue that uh, business groups are concerned about. You say what? Well, I mean, you've got to look at everyone individually, Lindsay. You've got to figure out the right approach. I think all too often a blanket approach to these things uh, works out and has some unintended consequences. We have at the CFTC what they call a principles-based approach to regulation. It allows some flexibility so that uh, traders and exchanges aren't mired down in endless bureaucracy. That's one of the things that I think the SEC may take away from this that they like. At the same time, I like some of the things that the SEC does. I like their manipulation standard, which uh, does a better 
better job of actually putting crooks in jail. So again, it's give and take from both sides. We'll have to find the appropriate balancing. When you talk about rules-based versus principle-based regulatory practices, uh, it seems like a lot of the panelists out there today, a lot of the business interests seem to favor the CFTC's view of things going for a principles-based approach. How do you square that with the SEC's much more stringent uh, rules-based approach? Well, I, I think, and Chairman Shapiro was asking this question too, I think you have to look at what the individual products are. So the SEC, they're, they're looking at if something is geared towards a retail customer as opposed to as opposed to is being offered level of regulation that you need. But the one thing we know is that our markets in the U.S. have been some of the most powerful in the U.S. And if we're going to continue that, we have to make sure that we're not overly burdensome and at the same time add appropriate sideboards to protect consumers. And to those who say harmonization, like again, Craig Donahue of CME Group says harmonization cannot work. It doesn't work. Uh, that the line should be drawn more firmly. Again, you say what? Well, it depends on what the specific examples are. And in general, there needs to be more coordination, like you said at the outset of this. This is historic. And for us, we need to make sure that we're trying to look at the end user, and that's consumers. People are filling their cars up with gas, uh, farmers, and, and et cetera. We need to make sure they're getting what's a fair price in these markets. Now, at the end of the day, this all comes down to Congress, of course, and they have a very busy legislative docket with a series of issues that maybe the American public may not be quite so attuned to, such as this. You think this is going to happen this year, next year? I, I do, but uh, it's a great question because, you know, they're, they're, they're mired in the health care debate. There's mm -hmm. other things. But I think we are going to get to regulatory reform this year. I don't think it will be lost in the shuffle, okay. and I think we need that. All right. Thank you so much, Commissioner Bert Chilton from the CFTC. Lori, we're going to send it back to you in New York. Lindsay Yard, thanks so much.